everybody, it's me, Sadie, and welcome to my kitchen. You may be asking yourself, why are we in the kitchen today? Well, that's because we're going to do something a little bit different today. And as I've mentioned on this channel a few times, I make a whole line of goat milk soap um, that I sell off my farm along with all of the pork and chicken and eggs and everything else that we produce. Um, so I do a lot of goat milk soap from using fresh goat's milk from the goats that we have outside and oh, oh, well, hopefully not inside. That would be awful if I had goats inside. Ugh. Anyway, so <laughs> I do this whole line of goat's milk soap and I decided that I wanted to make a couple of soap making videos to show you guys what I do. Now this first video is my first ever soap making video, the first time I ever filmed myself making soap, and of course the soap turned out to be a problem. <laughs> which is actually an interesting lesson. I was overconfident. I thought I remembered everything about this particular batch and fragrance that I was using, and I didn't bother to check my notes because I've made this soap before a dozen times, and I should have checked my notes. And as you'll see, we had a bit of an issue. So that's kind of a life lesson today, is don't be overconfident and always double check yourself. I hope you guys enjoy this content. Let me know, give me a like, leave me a comment, and tell me what you think. Thanks for watching. All right, so here we are in the soap kitchen, which is really just the kitchen, and we're gonna make some soap. I'm all geared up with my gloves and my safety goggles, which you can't see right now, and we're gonna get started. In this picture, I have my oils, which are olive oil, castor oil, shea butter, unrefined shea butter, coconut oil and organic free trade palm oil. Um, all of the hard oils have been melted, everything's been mixed together, and I've let this come back down to room temperature. Um, my goat's milk is also already in here. All of the soaps I make are goat milk soap, so the goat's milk is also already in here, um, which is not the way a lot of people do their goat's milk soap. A lot of people mix their goat's milk in with the lye water or add it at trays. I've been making goat milk soap for about 15 years, and this is the way I like to do it, and this method really works for me. So, and then in this jar, I have my lye and distilled water, which I mixed several hours ago to allow that to also come to room temperature. That takes a few hours to get to room temperature. So I'll usually start my lye water in the morning if I'm planning on making soap in the evening or, or whatever. So the first step here, we'll give this a little twirl just to make sure it's all mixed together, is to go ahead and pour the lye water into the oils and we're gonna pour that down our stick blender, which helps with preventing a lot of air bubbles from kind of flowing in there. We'll let that drip out, and then we will actually go through and, oh, we got some lye flakes settled there on the bottom, so we'll go ahead and just scrape all of that out into our oils. Those will disperse and saponify with everything else, so that's not an issue, but we'll just scrape out all of the lye water and make sure it all gets in there. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And we'll set this off to the side. We'll burp our stick blender to make sure we don't have any giant air bubbles and go ahead and start stick blending this. Now I'm gonna stick blend this to a light trace which is gonna be just past emulsification and let's get it going. And that's about what I'm going for here. It's a really light trace. It's really there's just a thin, thin pudding consistency, or even thinner than that. Really, I'm um, you know a, a, a drinkable yogurt consistency, I guess. It's it's really a very thin trace. So we're gonna do that. And the fragrance oil I am using today is a curry leaf and coconut fragrance oil from the Fragrance Laboratory. I have, as you can see, as this bottle's kind of dirty, and I have used this fragrance quite a bit. This fragrance behaves well in my soap, so I am gonna go ahead and just add the fragrance, the appropriate amount of fragrance oil in my little, cute little beakery beaker here. I'm gonna go ahead and just add that in to the soap at this point. And I'm just going to kind of stir this as opposed to stick blending it anymore because I don't want to over thicken my soap at all. So I'll just kind of stir this in gently. I'm going to rice a little bit, so I am going to have to stick blend it to kind of get rid of that ricing. You 
see that how I wanted to get a little chunky on me and then I went ahead and just stick blended it for a few seconds and that kind of smoothed right out. So I'm going to go ahead and scrape this stick blender off and set this to the side. I'm not and I'm going to go ahead and pour off about half of this soap into this bowl. And another portion off into this other nice pitcher here. And into my original pitcher, I'm going to add some titanium dioxide dispersed in water to kind of make that nice and white. And into my second pitcher, I am adding some vibrant green mica from Nature's Nurture Garden soaps. And into my final bowl, I am adding some neon green pigment. And I don't know where I got this from. I bought this on a um, fast buy or a co-op buy or something probably four or five years ago. I bought a lot of it, like six to eight ounces. And you really only need like a half a teaspoon per batch. So I've had it forever. I'm going to go ahead and mix those colorants in. And this soap is thickening up on me a little bit faster than I anticipated. I've recently changed my recipe. So I may need to kind of review my notes on how all these different fragrance oils react in this new recipe. So, and as usual with soap, you always mix your colorants from lightest to darkest. So I'm gonna get in here with the green mica. And I am mixing this with a spatula just because it is starting to thicken up and I don't want to accelerate that any more than it already is. And that green mica turns like this pukey green color, that's fine. Um, with these vibrance micas, they'll kind of discolor, and then once the soap saponifies, they will actually turn back to their nice, vibrant color again. And I, and I am using a 18 bar whew, mold from Nurture Garden Soaps today, which is also where the mica for this recipe came from. And we are going to be doing some plopping here because this really hardened up a lot faster than I thought it was going to. So see, even when you've made soap for a long time, sometimes things do not work out as anticipated. So we're going to just kind of plop this all in here as best we can. And then we'll pat it down and bang it to get it to kind of slip into the cracks there and we'll get this sorted out. It'll still be a nice soap at the end of the day. Even if it's not the prettiest soap I've ever made, it'll still be a nice soap at the end of the day. So I'm going to scrape out this container as best I can. Get all that soap in there. And then we're just going to kind of squish this down with our spatula a bit. Make sure it gets into the corners. edges of our mold together there. Set that to the side. I'm going to bang this to get the soap to settle down into the corners and such. That also sends my dogs running. They hate the banging. up a little bit and get that soap frosting started and I'll be back with you in just a minute. Okay so we are back and we are ready to pipe the top of our soap. I have loaded my soap frosting into a piping bag with an open star tip here on the top and we're going to go ahead and start piping and to be honest I am fairly new 
two piping soap. I think this is probably my fifth or sixth loaf that I've actually put a pipe top on. So this is all kind of new and fun for me. Um, I actually got into piping soap when we moved here um, into the Carolinas from our previous home. It's kind of funny how different areas of the world, different um, people are into different things. Uh, when we were down living in a more rural kind of, I'm sorry, in a more urban sort of area, um, people wanted soaps that's, that were very natural and almost rustic appearing, lots of botanicals, lots of essential oils, things of that nature, um, not a lot of colorants and you know nothing really fancy. People liked my soaps to come in, in plain brown craft paper wrappers and things of that nature. Um, and then when we moved up here, which interestingly is a more urban, and not, oh, see, I keep doing that. It's a more rural type environment. People, it seems that what moves for me here are fancy soaps, things with lots of glitter and sparkle and really, you know, fancy, strong smelling things, not necessarily like, you know, a lot of mint and stuff, but really things like this, like the, the coconut leaf, you know, curry leaf and coconut or um, a lot of dupes from stores like, you know, stores that we're not going to say their name, you know, stores that rhyme with Kush and stores that, you know, make you work for your bath. You know, it's, oh, and I've kind of gone off wonky on an angle here. Um, you know, they want those types of, of fragrances. So we've kind of, I've kind of changed things up here and started getting into more artistic and fancy kind of soaps and doing piping and things like that. And if you really want to see some incredible piping, you should check out the Royalty Soaps channel. Katie over there is just amazing with her piping. This is actually her piping set. She sells a piping set. And this is actually her piping recipe. When you buy the set, you get access to the recipe, which to be 100% honest, is why I bought the set. I had fiddled with trying to create my own recipe. I had used other people's recipes that they had for free on the internet and I could never get one to work. And I finally was like, you know what? She does such an incredible job. I'm gonna go ahead and try it out. And this recipe is fantastic and I need to load more frosting. I'll be right back. And so here we go. And so I know a lot of you are here primarily because you started on this channel with my reshape balloon and my weight loss things and everything. And just to kind of keep you updated on that, I'm squishing soap out onto my thumb, which is not something you should want to do. Let's just put that over there for now. Um, I still have my balloon in. I have about another six weeks left with that. It's going very well. I'm working my way towards 40 pounds down now, which I'm very happy about. I'm expecting to come in, my thought is that I'm gonna come in somewhere about 45 to 50 pounds when I get the balloon out is my thought, is what my loss is gonna be. Um, as you can see, the texture of the soap has changed as I've been going, as it gets harder, I'm getting more stars that are a little bit more spread out, which is kind of fun. Okay, so I have the first layer on, and now I'm going to go back and just kind of try to fill in some of the gaps on here. on this one my theory my idea with this one and that's why I kind of did like these random stars and stuff is that I was kind of going for almost a shredded coconut kind of look since it is curry leaf and coconut on the top you know I wanted to do green on the inside because it's a very green fragrance 
and then kind of this almost like shredded coconut kind of look on the top. So we'll set that to the side. And I gotta do just a couple more things to this soap. Um, the first one is something I definitely saw and learned from watching Katie over at Royalty Soaps videos. I'll link her stuff in the description box below if you wanna check out her channel. Even if you'll never make soap, just watching the artistic way in which she does her soap is just absolutely amazing. And she's so bright and bubbly and fun to listen to and fun to watch, I, you just can't stand it. Um, and that is doing a mica drizzle on the top. So here I have some of that green vibrance mica that I used inside the soap, and it's mixed with a little castor oil. And I'm gonna take a, woo, um, a handheld milk frother, like you would use to, you know, mix up your coffee. And I'm just gonna use that to kind of mix that right into the mix the oil right into there. That works fantastic. And then I'm just gonna take a pipette and I'm gonna take this beautiful green and I'm just gonna kind of drizzle it randomly over the top of the soap. couple of steps on this soap, on this coconut and curry leaf soap, since I've got the green drizzle on and I kind of let that sit for a second while I talk, is I am going to actually go through and sprinkle on some glitter. And this is just super sparkle and viral glitter. It's a uh, biodegradable glitter from Nurture Garden Soaps. And I just put that in a little tea strainer and I'm just going to kind of gently kind of ding that along the edge here and that'll lightly dust which looks really pretty they almost look like snow peaks now with the with the glitter on them you know that the white with the glitter it's very pretty and we'll just kind of do that back and forth a couple of times because you know what you really can never have too much glitter can you i mean come on i do have to say that i kind of enjoy now being in an area of the world and at a time when people seem to be enjoying glittery colorful things because I enjoy making glittery colorful things. And our, and our final step anytime we make soap is to go ahead and spritz the soap with 91% rubbing alcohol. This prevents soda ash from forming on the top and it also kind of seals all of that mica drizzle and the glitter and everything kind of in and there we go. So I will spritz this liberally. And that's that. Thank you so much for watching this video. And, oh, actually, don't thank you so much for watching the video. That's that. We're gonna let this soap sit for about 24 hours, and we will cut it tomorrow, and we'll look and see what those bars look like inside after our big mishap with the soap <laughs> accelerating on me, and we'll see what we end up with. See you in a minute. Hi, guys. So it's about 48 hours later, and I have unmolded this soap. And you can see how the top turned out. It's pretty pretty. Now, of course, you know I had trouble with this fragrance oil deciding it wanted to accelerate trace. So we have some air pockets and things here on the side. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut this sucker today and see how it looks. Okay, so I decided to change up the angle here a little bit and kind of film from the side now because I feel like when you're on the other side of the table that my hands and everything are always in the way. So let's go ahead and cut this soap. I'm gonna get out my soap loaf cutter, which is from Woodskin, and you can order them on Etsy. There's a lot of companies that make very similar soap cutters, so this is not, I know, um, Buds is one that a lot of people use, the bud cutter. So it's just basically a single bar wire cutter. So we'll go ahead and crank that up and get our soap lined up and let's see what this looks like. Ooh, as I knock the camera over on the inside. I can tell you that it smells fantastic. The scent is very strong. And let's make that first cut and all the way through. Oh, and this is what we have on the inside. It actually came out in pretty nice layers, better than I was expecting. You can see that um, that bottom layer, which should have been white, but it set up too fast. The dark green and the green vibrance, they set up pretty nice. Let's cut some more bars and see what it looks like towards the middle. 
Now this loaf will give me 18 bars of soap. And there's another one. Came out pretty nice, all in all. Tops look nice. Looks pretty good. And that last cut always gives me a little skinny end piece that I'll cure and throw in my shower. For as much trouble as this fragrance gave me, this turned out to be a fairly decent soap. It's not my most artistic or most beautiful or most perfect bar, but they smell great. They are my goat milk soap formula, so they'll be just a luxurious, wonderful soap to bathe with, and they look fairly decent. Thank you so much for watching this soap video. I hope you enjoy this kind of content on my channel. Certainly give me a like if you do. Subscribe if you want to see more soap making videos, more of my lifestyle videos, more of my burlesque videos, more of my weight loss journey videos. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel. I'm keeping this channel as kind of a hodgepodge at this point. At some point, if I think that people would prefer for me to split them off into separate channels, I'll go ahead and do that. But for right now, we're going to keep it all together. And this is Sadie Mayhem, and I'm happy to see you. Bye-bye.